this is Krista with Big Family Homestead and today I'm going to show you how to make yogurt. Raw milk yogurt, well kind of. Well the kind of part is I'm using raw milk to make the yogurt but you do have to pasteurize it just a little bit for it to work right. I have tried to make raw milk, raw yogurt in the past. It has failed miserably. A friend of mine who has a friend that does raw milk and raw milk yogurt, and she said that if you want raw milk, drink your raw milk. If you want yogurt, you're going to have to pasteurize it a little bit because the lactase that's in the raw milk eats the cultures from your yogurt. So it just curdles and looks gross and nobody wants to eat it except the pigs. You're going to need a few things to start with your project. You're going to need a really old heating pad. When I say really old, you're going to need the kind that doesn't shut off after an hour. This is crucial because your yogurt is going to sit on this heating pad for seven hours and you don't want to have to keep coming back to it to turn it on. This, I f we found this really helpful. It's one of those uh, infrared thermometers just to make sure that this heating pad is about 110 degrees. Also, you're going to need a large bath towel because you're going to put it over your pot so that it stays nice and warm. A thermometer, a digital thermometer is really, really helpful when you're wanting to test the temperature of your, of your milk. Yogurt starter. You can buy the fancy ones off of Amazon but I find if you just go to the store, you can buy any plain yogurt um, from the store and use that. I prefer organic, but they didn't have any at that time. At the time. And then just a spoon. Oh, oh wait, your milk. Lots and lots of milk. Now you can use store-bought milk. Just make sure that you're not using the ultra, ultra pasteurized or high heat pasteurization. It won't work. You need a low pasteurization or even better yet, raw milk. Now for today, I'm starting with two gallons of raw milk and two of these uh, four ounce, oh, sorry, these are 5.3 ounce uh, containers of raw milk. One last thing you're going to need is crucial for your yogurt. You need a half sink full of ice water to cool your milk down because you, you're going to raise the milk to 185 degrees and then you're going to drop it to 110 and that ice bath helps a ton. Of course, if there's a, you know, three feet of snow outside, you could use that too. Okay, step one, you're going to heat your milk on a low, relatively low temperature because you don't want to burn it. You're going to heat it to 185 degrees. It could take up to a half an hour to do that. It is a really good idea to keep the milk moving so that it doesn't burn on the bottom while you're monitoring the temperature. Okay, now we've reached 185 degrees. We're gonna take it off of the heat and straight into the ice bath. Now we're gonna bring this temperature down to 110. Now you want to keep stirring this so that way the cool from the outside gets towards the middle and it doesn't uh, reduce your temperature too much. So another side little cool tip, I decided to rubber band the thermometer to the spoon so that I don't have to hold both items in the milk. Okay, our temperature has reached 110 degrees so we're going to add our yogurt cultures now. Now give this a good stir just to incorporate all of that yogurt into this milk. Okay, so now that our yogurt is incorporated into our milk, we're going to go put it on our heating pad and get it covered up and keep it all nice and roaster toasty warm. Done. Now it's important to keep it nice and warm at least 110 degrees for at least seven hours. I like to do it overnight so it's a little more tangy. Our family likes a little tangy yogurt. Okay, so now we've waited our seven hour minimum. We like to go a little bit longer because we need a, we like a tangier yogurt. Um, if you like a thinner yogurt, 
you're done. You can just go ahead and put this into quart jars or whatever container you want to carry, you know, hold it in um, and stick it in the back of the refrigerator and leave it. We like a thicker yogurt, so I'm going to go ahead and strain it out into a cheesecloth with a strainer underneath into another pot. So I'll probably need two of these because of the amount of yogurt we made. So let's show you what this yogurt looks like now. It is nice and thick and it's got some whey in here. Now if you want to leave it just like this, you can just strain it up, but look at that. Beautiful yogurt. We're gonna let this rest and strain for about uh, one to two hours, but you can also let this strain for about 24 hours and you'll have yogurt cheese. All right, so now we've waited our time and I, I hung it on a wooden spoon with some twine. So I'm gonna cut that off and go ahead and put that into a bowl and show you what we got. Nice, thick yogurt. And if I let that hang for a little bit longer, probably another 24 hours or another uh, 20 hours, then um, that would be yogurt cheese. All right, so this is what came off of our yogurt, uh, the whey. This is the byproduct of the what's left over um, after you make yogurt or cheese. And this is a super, super great product to have uh, for pigs or you can replace it in the water in your bread. You can boil noodles with this. This is so, so good for you. So that's how we make yogurt here at the Big Family Homestead. And my name is Krista and you have an amazing day.